Hey guys, what's up? It's Jamie. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the stepper for Angular Material, and we're going to be going through the docs and seeing what exactly this thing can do. Alright, so first off, if you haven't seen my tutorial on Angular Material Basics, be sure to check that out, and then this will make more sense. Alright, so their first example is kind of a handful, so we're just going to go down here and get to a simpler example. Alright, so there are two variants. Um, there's a vertical one and there's a horizontal one. Okay, and that's just what you see here that only changes the direction uh, that the steps are presented. It doesn't do anything else other than that. Um, so I'm going to copy the vertical one and then paste it into my own code. Uh, and then I'll change this to be step 2. And then we also need to make sure that in the module file, uh, in the import section, we import mat stepper module. Okay, uh, we're also going to need um, the icons for later, so I'm going to import the mat icon module, uh, as well as inside the index.html, we need to import this link for the icons the font from Google, so it's fonts.googleapis.com slash icon, and then it's for material icons. Okay, so make sure you have that, otherwise our custom icon stuff that we're going to do, that won't work. Okay, so now that we have both of those things, um, we have our vertical stepper with two steps inside of it, um, labeled with step one and step two, each with content, which is just plain text. So we'll see what that looks like. Alright, so that's exactly what we would expect. We have a step one, a step two, um, and it animates nicely, so that's great. Um, also, to ensure those animations work, make sure in your app module you have the browser animations module imported. Alright, now I'm going to change that to be the horizontal one, so you can see the difference. And just like that, we have the horizontal one. So with this, you can see that it tries to span the entire width of the page. Um, so if you wanted to change that, you could just put it inside a div, which has a set width. Um, but I like mine this way, so I'm not going to change it. All right, next up is labels. So we already kind of just saw that because we set ours to be step one and step two. Uh, however, you can do something a little more fancy you can uh, provide an ng template marked with mat step label attribute um, and that'll allow you to have an even more customizable uh, label so you can put additional stuff in here so I'm going to remove this step one and then inside of there I'm going to do something like put a, a bold tag or something so B and it's just going to say uh, my custom step. Alright, and as you can see the label is now bold, so that's kind of fancy, whereas the previous one could only be plain text. Alright, the next thing we can do is add some buttons to navigate between the states, and in order to do that you need to mark the buttons with the attribute mat stepper previous and next. Um, so let's do that in our example. Alright, so we have two buttons, they're both map buttons, and they're labeled next and back. Okay, and it looks like uh, I forgot to import the map button module, so I'm going to go and do that real fast. So map button module inside of our app module file. Alright, and there they are, there's our buttons, next. And I guess I should put the... Uh, back inside of step 2 so that you can actually click it. So I'm going to put back in step 2, refresh. Alright, so we go next and back. And that works just great. Alright, this next section is on uh, a linear stepper, which means that uh, you have to complete each step. Like if you're collecting information from a user, you require them to at least do something. Uh, instead of just clicking to the end, done without doing anything. 
You can do uh, this with either a single form or multiple forms. Uh, I'm going to do multiple forms because I think it's easier. So we have their example now. Um, and inside of our form, we can just have a couple of inputs. All right, so the first input is just going to be a first name, last name. Um, and then the next one will have maybe like favorite TV show. And I'll change the form control name to be second control. So let's see what that does for us if we refresh. It uh, looks like I forgot to import the forms module. So I'm going to go in here to the imports and say import uh, form forms module from angular slash forms. All right, and we also need to import the uh, reactive forms module. All right, so that I'm going to include that up here as well as down here. And I also need to import map form field module. All right, and this example also requires um, some basic logic for our forms, or at least some objects that the template can be tied to. So inside of our app component TS, I'm going to declare a bunch of form groups. Um, and in the constructor, I'm going to inject the form builder. And then finally, I'm going to hook up a validator to um, the first form group. Uh, if you want to know more about how forms work, you can see my video I've done on forms and I explain how all of that works. But for now, we just need this in order to get our code to actually render on the page. Um, so our forms are named form group 1 and form group 2. So instead of here, I'm going to rename these to form group 1 and form group 2. Uh, also, I think I forgot to import the mat input module, which we are using inside of our forms, so we need that. Okay, and with that, we should see our example working. There it is. So the first step asks you for last name and first name, but since our stepper is linear, it won't allow us to click on the second step unless we complete the first step. Okay, so I'm going to input something. And then I'll click on the next step, and now it'll let me. Um, and then I'll input this, and now I would be done, but I don't have any more steps. Okay, so just to recap that, um, we have two steps, and each of these steps has a step control set to whatever form it's using. And this is how the steps know whether or not you, ha you can advance, is because you've told it what form you're using for each step. And then in here, we just have a regular form um, with a form field with an input. Um, and then that just has a placeholder with the first name, last name. And it tells us what the form control name is, um, if you wanted to access, access that inside of the form itself. And then in here, uh, in our TypeScript, we define each form and we set them equal to um, the result of using a form builder. Um, and so that just makes a form for us. All right, and the next section talks about using the optional step. Um, and that just means that we can add the attribute optional uh, to any of these steps, and then the user won't have to complete it. So I'm going to add that here. And refresh, and now we shouldn't be required to complete step one. So I'm going to skip it and click step two. And there we go. And it even tells us optional here, so that's nice. Although it does look kind of weird because we marked that uh, input as required, but you get the idea. All right, so the next section just says that uh, you can mark step steps as not editable. So if I go here and mark this step as um, editable equals uh, false, then uh, after I go to the next step, I won't be able to edit that step once again. So here I'll click step two, and now I won't be able to go back to step one because it's not editable. 
All right, the next section just says that um, the completed attribute uh, of a step returns true if the step is valid. So in our code to verify that, we could just say that this first step is marked as my step. And then uh, in the TypeScript, we can create a view child to grab that. And I need to remember to import that from Angular Core. Um, and so now this step will reference that as step one. Okay, so at the bottom here, I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna have a div that says, is step one complete? And then I'll make a Boolean. That's what this bang bang means. Make a Boolean out of my step, which is our um, variable here, um, dot completed. Okay, so that should show us whether or not the step is completed. So first it's false. Now it's true. All right, so for this next step, uh, I'm gonna simplify our uh, vertical stepper to just have two steps. Uh, this next step is uh, overriding the icons. So uh, for instance, we can override the um, edit icon. Um, so like, by default here, when we go to step two, the edit icon is a pencil. But if we wanted to change that, we could easily do that um, using this code right here, uh, ng template. We just set the mat stepper icon for whatever state we want to change. There are only a couple of them. Uh, they describe number, done, and edit. Um, but I'm just going to do this edit one. So in order to uh, change its icon, we provide this ng template and then inside of there we provide whatever icon we want in that case it's the insert drive file um, and these icon names are all available from um, this website material.io slash icons okay so we changed ours to insert file drive so instead of being a pencil it's now a little file all right that's it for this video you guys uh, let me know if you liked it in the comments below and be sure to subscribe for more videos like this.